and they had Rath Yatra with all of his friends, all the other children. Do you have your Rath Yatra? Do you have Rath Yatra? No. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you do with your friends? Did he study? What subjects? Huh? What subject did he study? So Prabhupada was following, at that time India was up under the rule of British. It, it was a colony, it was not a free country, it was controlled by Britain. At that time, uh, India did not have independence. So, but Mahatma, Mahatma Gandhi was fighting that we want to get free in the No. No. Not, not guns, no. Just no. preaching, talking, politics, politics. 
Spiritual master died when he get initiation. Nam kau sam sam sam. And his guru died. Guru died out. Sibi nam kau sam ho. Yeah. So for only three years, get association with his guru. And then his guru died. But before his guru died, his guru told him, "Preach the message of Lord Chaitanya." Right? From, from, when guru died, guru said, "I will preach the message of Lord Chaitanya." So what did Prabhupada do? So what did Prabhupada do? No. Yeah, right. Writing or prone. Who's writing? Orpa. Amri, can you write like this? You. Thank you. 
Can you die, honey? No? Starts writing prodigiously. In 1944, he single handedly begins publishing and distributing Back to Godhead. Back to Godhead. What is this? This is a newspaper. Proper print newspaper. Print his own newspaper. And he writes, and he print, then he go and sell. Uh, people about that. Which year he begin? <laughs> the first issue addresses the crisis of war. The second world war within 20 years is scourging the earth. Back to God points out that people throughout the world want an end to war. But so often they want God's kingdom without God, and they cannot act. All our plans will be doomed to failure by our own selfishness unless we turn to God. After the war, a boy shot. Okay, Prabhupada began 1944. What happened then, that time? What's happening? A war, world war, the whole world fighting. Second world war. The second world war in 20 years. 1920 world war, 1944 world war. No. people fighting, drop bombs, very dangerous every day, very afraid, you don't know when you're going to die. All the young boys, you have to go to work, can you go to school? Well, uh, so many
Got proud bad. No. Yeah. The first disciple. Prabhupada's first disciple. So what did they, what did people ask when Prabhupada when they asked Prabhupada they want to get initiation, what did Prabhupada say? Prabhupada they, they asked Prabhupada, they want to become his disciple. Then Prabhupada would say, first you have to chant Hare Krishna. Om Amrit, you want a, you want diksha? Yeah, diksha, right? Yeah, diksha, First, you have to chant Hare Krishna. First, chant Hare Krishna and follow four principles. What are the four principles? Mohan, what are the four principles? <laughs> Mohan, four principles. All right. Mohan. One principle. <laughs> Mohan. One principle. Tell me. Don't eat. Eat a lie. Who did not lie? Making a lie. Are you just not making a lie? No eat meat. Only meat. No, no, no. But kin. Who kin? She needs one kin. Meat. Make it meat. Fish. Fish. Pass the tight food. All right. Okay, you tell me another principle. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Okay, good up. Another principle. No gambling. 
for the re-spiritualization of the entire human society. But often he leaves Bengal to print his magazine and books in nearby Delhi. Travel is a time and tolerance, but Bhaktivedanta Swami accepts it as part of his spiritual mission to broadcast devotional service to Lord Krishna. He writes, our leaders have carefully set aside the treasure house of Indian spiritual life, and they are imitating the Western material way of life. But people are more unhappy than ever before because of the exclusion of the most important part of life, the spiritual aspect. In Delhi, Bhaktivedanta Swami personally distributes copies of Back to Gandhi and, with small donations, struggles to maintain the publication. He regularly sees Surendra Kumar Jain, a printer. It was uh, somewhere in the month of February 1956 that I first met uh, Prabhupada. He came to my press for uh, getting the magazine printed Back to Godhead. I found that it was not very really easy for him to collect money. He would come to the press practically every day and after the printing was done, he would do everything himself. But he was a dedicated person, a very committed person. And uh, at the times when he was not in a position to pay the bills, I would ask him, why are you running this? Why don't you stop it? He would say, no, it is my mission. And one day, Sweden Kumar, will see that I will succeed in my mission. By 1960. Who was that man? Oh, no, that's no. I know. That's <laughs> not, that's not. <laughs> the other man. With the mustache, with the juke, with the sword. coat, the jacket. Who was that man? No, no, it's not. But I'm not going to go to the hospital. Yeah, manager of the printing shop. You had the printing shop. <laughs> they were told because Prabhupada went to Vrindavan and in Vrindavan he started to write Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, <laughs> And so then he would go to Delhi and we saw the picture. Prabhupada said Vrindavan. And how did he go to Delhi? Prabhupada did uh Delhi in a by Delhi Kim Rota Rai. But before the train, of course, to go to Mathura. Okay. Yeah. The horse and cart. We go to Mathura, let Mathura get the train, go to Delhi. So did Prabhupada have a lot of money? No. Oh, no. No money, he's very poor, eh? So he had to he have to he wants to print the magazine. What magazine? Uh, What's okay. the name? Back to Godhead. Back to Godhead. Yeah. Have you seen the Back to Godhead? Back to Godhead, man. Back to Godhead, man. So, when Prabhupada is going to Delhi to put the Back to Godhead, have to go there to the printer shop every day, get the magazine printed. So the man tell him, you know why you do this, you're an old man, you spend so much money to print the magazine, you should just rest, you should just stay in Vrindavan. But Prabhupada said, no, I cannot. This, this is my work for Krishna. I cannot give up my work. Before, 
Bhaktivedanta Swami completes three volumes of Srimad Bhagavatam. Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri lauds his accomplishment and recommends his books for placement in India's public libraries. Sumati Moraji, chairman of the Cynthia Steamship Company, gives contributions for printing Bhaktivedanta Swami's books and arranges for his passage to America. So we saw Prabhupada printed the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, three volumes. And then he showed to the Prime Minister of India. And the Prime Minister said, oh, very nice. The Prime Minister. And the Prime Minister get them for their library in the government colleges. So, Kaupe Krai. Minister, Kaupe Krai. No, no, no. Kaupe Krai. This lady, who's she? Huh? Sri Mati Morari Ji. Sakat. Do you know this lady? Kaupe Krai. <laughs> ah, who is she? she what she do? She She's a rich lady, right? She's a lot of money. So Prabhupada, go to her. I want donation. Tambun. Prophet want donation, Prophet. Well, uh, what, what does he want to do? What? <laughs> 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 Thailand devotees, then we can go on. <laughs> 
So she said, Swamiji, don't go America. Because you are old man. <laughs> and she said, Swamiji, very cold. Devotion with knowledge. And now, 
Prabhupada had to go on the ship to America. How long, how long does it take? Was it so is it very nice on the ship? Very big waves. Have you been on the ship? So then Prabhupada come to America. Bhaktivedanta Swami first stays in Butler, Pennsylvania, in the home of a friend's son, Gopal Agarwal, and his wife Sally. The Swami was a friend of my husband's father, uh, Mr. Agarwal, uh, in Agra, India. And he asked me to sponsor the Swami, and that's, that's what I did. How can I? Prabhupada has to get a sponsor to go to America. So Prabhupada met one man, an Indian man, and his son married to an American woman. So she is the lady, she met, her husband is Indian man. So they sponsored Prabhupada to come to America. The name, her name Sally Agarwal. I mean Sundaran is also Agarwal. <laughs>
the Prabhupada was holding the little boy. Who was that little boy? Yeah, that was her son, six months old. So now Prabhupada, then Prabhupada went to... The corporate world of Bhakti, Bhakti Vedanta Swami thought the most important philosophy in the world, Krishna consciousness, should be spread in one of the most important cities in the world, New York. He moves to 100 West 72nd Street. Three months later, his typewriter and tape recorder for translation are stolen. Bhakti Vedanta Swami later said, I came to America risking my life. I was physically unfit and at the fag end of my days. Sometimes I did not know where to live, nor was I used to the severe cold. Seemingly I was alone for one year, but I never felt alone. I always felt the presence of my spiritual master, so I did not lose my enthusiasm, despite all difficulties. Prabhupada, by New York, come down, ma. So the crowd could feel very alone to feel, oh, I'm alone. Oh, I don't know. The crowd could feel alone. Was it very nice in New York? Weather very nice? Very cold. He brought a big coat, hat. Very cold. The people very friendly. New York people very nice. Yeah, very nice, Mohana, oh, very nice. <laughs> we'll be friends. Huh? No, New York people. Not very nice. Makunda Goswami, one of the disciples. 
Sanskrit, he would read the Sanskrit smokas to the devotees. So many people started to come to the program. This is this man also used to come. And his name is So he's telling Prabhupada was living in the place in New York where the people were poor. But the other gurus they were living in the other part of New York where people were very rich. So he said, that he, he said, Prabhupada was very clever. He went to all the young people. did not care about the money. He wanted the young people to understand Krishna. He said respect to the knowledge and uh, advanced spiritual vibrations, particularly in the 60s. So it seemed historically just move on his part. Thank you. 
Go to the park, chant Hare Krishna, make some devotees, right? Hare Krishna, Hare 